Hello, hello everyone. So today I'm gonna talk about finding a bike in London. I've seen that you also have a, a sharing uh, bike scheme in this city. And this is how you, uh, when you travel and visit a new city, how you discover uh, different places with your friends. And I'm going to show you how we can use technology to use the open APIs uh, that Transport for London uh, give us today to get uh, the status of all of the bike stations that we can use around us. And I'm going to use a couple of technologies that I like to use. And the first one will be AWS Amplify, which is uh, serverless um, infrastructure, and then Angular. So let's go and start. So this is probably the most difficult part of my talk, how to pronounce my name. So my name is Gerard Sanz. And if you try to pronounce it, you need to know that uh, I'm from Barcelona, and this is Catalan. So it's not even Spanish, which is uh, more easy. So my name is, again, Gerard Sanz. Very good. So I'm a developer advocate at uh, Amazon Web Services, and we work with serverless technologies. I've been talking quite a lot in the last few years, and let me show you uh, some of the places I've been. So this is 139 talks in 36 countries, including Taiwan now. So I'm very happy, I'm very happy that I can uh, join you today. And you can see that there's also one new, this is not, I haven't been there yet, it's the Philippines. So I'm traveling to the Philippines next week and I'm going to be very close to 40 countries. Yes, 37. Let's see how far I can take it until I go back to a regular job at an office. Okay, so this is a little bit about me, but today I want to talk about bike sharing. Let's see what is bike sharing. So this is, this is the scheme running in uh, London. It's called uh, Santander Bikes, and this is the model that we use. I've seen that you have also yours. Um, what is the color of yours? Yellow, so this is, this is red. This is red, and there's a bank. This is a bank uh, as the main uh, sponsor. But of course, after some time using these bikes, they become part of the culture of London. And you can see that people like to make pictures with these bikes, even if uh, maybe you, are, you don't like them, or maybe they get in, a, in your way when you are living in the city. And they became very fashionable, and people really enjoy them. I mean, of course, you need to think about people visiting London for a short uh, stay, and they don't want to get into the underground, because they don't, they don't want to get underground to be visiting the city. It's much uh, fun to take a bicycle and just ride around. How many of you are fans of these bike sharing schemes? You like them, yeah? Many users? Very good, they are, also, they are also very affordable. And uh, in London, you can uh, ride a bike for two hours for free. So it's really nice. I don't know what's going on in this picture. Maybe this is some kind of uh, English ritual, I don't know. Uh, getting as many hats as you can. Uh, maybe it's the hat day. And uh, what else? Of course, of course the bikes, they also mix with the squirrels and the life in the, in the city. There's a lot of squirrels. If you go to London and uh, visit any of the parks, they are big parks, so there's also life in there. And they also like the, the bikes, apparently. So what are the benefits? Of course, we get uh, flexibility. We can go uh, take one of these bikes and uh, go around for uh, free most of the time. 
Um, this will also reduce traffic because if people is not using uh, public transport, they are using these bikes, we are reducing also the emissions, which is always good for uh, large cities. There's also a chance that if you are in a city with a lot of tourists, this can also help to reduce traffic because if everyone is using a car or is using a, a taxi or any other uh, means of transport, that means that there's more um, vehicles in the street. So it's also uh, making that a little bit difficult for everyone. And there's not only tourists in the cities, there's also the people living in the city. So you don't want tourists to be uh, in the way. And then of course there's, a, there's some health uh, benefits. So for the people using the bicycle, do you think that you get some health benefits from using the bicycle? You get more active than uh, using a uh, public transport. Maybe you get in trouble as well. So let's talk a little bit about Santander Cycles, which is the, um, uh, the sharing cycle uh, scheme in London. So this is the logo. We have seen some pictures already. And uh, they are using the same logo as the underground. Very good. So it started in uh, 2010. So now it's been uh, around for nine years. There's not less than 12,000 bikes. I mean, that's a lot of bikes. 700 stations. And some people uh, also like to make fun of these bikes. And uh, I don't know if you know Boris uh, is a prime minister, is a, I mean, it's a new prime minister. It looks very funny, and some people don't like him. So this is a this is a gift, like some neighbor, like giving good morning to uh, to Boris. <laughs> uh, some people don't like. I mean, politics is a tricky business. But now he's the prime minister, uh, fighting with Brexit and the likes. So I'm going to be showing you the London Unified API. And this is where you can get the latest uh, information around these bikes and the stations that are near you and how many bikes are there for you to, uh, to ride. So this is uh, run by Transport for London. And we are going to use some of just only uh, a couple of these APIs. The first one is bike point. So that's going to give me the stations, all of the stations in London. And one of the information that I'm going to use is the geolocation. And that's, we're going to get uh, that into uh, more detail, but this is basically where they are located in the map. So I can show it. We can also get uh, the information, the latest information for one specific station. And imagine you have few options and you want to see which uh, station has uh, how many bikes that you can, uh, you can hire. Sometimes you will be alone, sometimes you will be with a group of friends. There's also a feature to a search by name. I don't think it's that useful, but it's also there. So these are the three APIs that I'm going to, uh, to show you today. So let's see what comes back from this call. So this is the first API called Bike Point, and it's giving me the location and some of the data from these uh, dock stations. So this first one, we can see the ID, which is Bike Point's uh, number one. And I can see the description, what's the name for that uh, dock station. And then I can see some important information. And this is the number of bikes that I have available. So when I check the information from uh, that station, I can see that there's 11 bikes. So I can go uh, with a big group and uh, have fun. The, um, this information at the bottom, this is actually the location but is expressed with this latitude and longitude. And I'm going to explain it a little bit in more detail, but this is just the location of the station. So we have the location now, and we also know how many bikes are available. There's also more data, but this is the data that I'm going to use. Today, there's 778 uh, dock stations, and I got all of that data to use it in my uh, application. 
So this is a, another example, and in this case, I just call for the data for one station. But in that case, I need to know the name of that station, the ID. Uh, it's bike points number one, so that's the first station. And the information is very similar, it's just there is only one. Okay? I think it's quite easy. What do you think? No? One, it gives me all of the stations. The other API gives me just one. What do you th why do you think is the reason for that? Why do you think we have two APIs? Well, the answer to the question is because the first API is quite big. You can imagine almost 800 stations. You don't want to be carrying all that data all the time. Every time that the user is making an interaction with your application, you don't want to be downloading that uh, that information to get the latest uh, data. So sometimes you just want to get the data for one uh, <coughs> station. And that's why it's just for uh, performance. If we didn't care about performance and we didn't pay for internet connection, we would just use one API. Uh, it will never happen. It will never be free. But yeah, we can just hope. So this is the reaction that I got when I was, wow, I can do everything that I need. I have the stations, I have how many bikes are available, I can build my application, isn't it? Well, it wasn't that easy. I had to learn a lot of things. Well, this is the application London Bikes. I mean, the name is not so original, but I put some effort on the logo. Look, it's the Big Ben and some, and some bikes. Okay, so let's demonstrate, okay? Um, not a search. Let me go and demonstrate the app. Okay, so see, you can, uh, you can see all of the stations, the almost 800 stations. And one thing that I want you to show is, of course I had some issues because we are not in London. So that's going to make my demo a little bit more difficult. What I want to show you is that I can use the location of my uh, computer, and I can find it. So let's, let's try. This is very uh, exciting. I really like this, this uh, feature. So that's going to try to gather my location and then move the map. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Where is it going? <laughs> wow. Boom. What about, what about that? I mean, it's, it's worth only for that uh, demo. <laughs> so what uh, we want to do, of course, that will be the usage that you would make. You would just find your location. You don't want to look for everything in the city. You just want to look around yourself. So let's see. What I decided to do is just look for uh, a kilometer around. So I, uh, I put some logic here to show me that. So this circle is showing me all of these, um, it's more or less like 10 minutes walk. So I can see all of the stations that are around that uh, radius. Of course, this, is, this makes no sense. So I need to go back and load the London information, but I just wanted to show you the animation. Okay, let's go back to London. So here, um, one thing that I did first, of course, was to load the information that came from that call from the API, uh, bike points, and show it on the map. That took me quite a lot uh, of work, but I managed to do it. And one interesting thing that I can do is I can search for the stations. So let me, let me show you. When I look for, when I search, I can see the name of the station, and then if I click, I mean, of course you need to know <laughs> the station name, but I mean, if you are in London for a few days, you probably know the station name, but that's going to be um, navigating to that station. What else I built here? I also built this, um, the search, and in this case, the search is pointing to Piccadilly Circus, 
which is really the center of, uh, of London. And you can see that there's quite a lot of stations here. So one thing that I also did is, and I also like this feature, is like some kind of 3D like matrix. Okay, I did this on my spare time. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So let's see how I make it, okay? You want to see how I build this? Yes, okay. Let's, let's go back to the slides. So I use AWS Amplify, and this is a tool uh, that covers both native and web. For this application, I use the web, uh, but you can also use native. And this is a set of uh, libraries, a framework, uh, developer tools, and also cloud services. Uh, for AWS, we have uh, more than 100 services at your disposal. And for this demo, I use one that helps me to do searches. And the idea behind that is that I wanted to get the stations in one kilometer radius. And this requires some mathematical calculations. It's not so easy to calculate using latitude and longitude. And I didn't know how to do it, uh, to be honest. So I tried to use some service to help me to do that. And also do it very quickly. Because if you do the calculations using JavaScript or, other, or some other technologies, it's going to be quite slow. So I use like the best um, approach using a service that is called AWS Elasticsearch. One tool that I use when um, running my code with AWS Amplify is the CLI. And maybe if you are using a modern front-end framework, you will be familiar with a CLI tool. Um, how that works? Well, that's going to give me access to what I call full-stack serverless. Serverless is mainly back-end, but full-stack serverless covers from uh, the client to the server. And the way I use the Amplify CLI is just running some commands. And these are the commands that you have to learn. So it, there are a few of them. The first one is to initialize the project. Then I can add the services that I need. I'm going to use a couple of them. Then I can push those to the cloud so I can uh, access them. And then if I need to do changes, I can run updates. So it's very easy. You can uh, explain this to a new uh, team member, and they can get up to date pretty quickly. We have some categories. These are different features that we can use uh, right away. And I'm not, I don't have time to cover all of them, but I am just want to talk about API uh, category. What I built is a GraphQL API that is uh, accessing that Elasticsearch, so I can do the search on those locations, on those bike stations. So this is a little bit of an intro, and this, this is the reaction I got from my colleagues. It's like, you are crazy. You're going to build all of this and also involve maps? Yes. I'm, I have no fear. So how we work with maps? Well, we need to do some work. The first thing that we need to do is we need to transform the data so we can use it in a map. And the standard uh, format for that is GeoJSON. So I got that into this format. So I transformed the original result, and I created these um, what I call features. And these features will give me a point, which is the station that I want to use. And I can also use the data about that station in these properties. So I had to move some data around. Once I got that, I created a GeoJSON file. And this is the file that has all of the locations. And I can load that into my map in just one operation. So it's very efficient. One thing that we want to talk is the coordinates, the, this latitude and longitude. So how we deal with uh, latitude and longitude? Well, we need to find 
the longitude, and you can see that if we want to point to London, it's going to be on the left side, which is going um, on the negative of longitude, and then the latitude starts more or less um, below the Ecuador, and then it goes up north in positive and down south in negative. So more or less that point is one a station. What station? The first one that we are, what we are uh, dealing with. And when you write coordinates in this way, you use the longitude and the latitude. So once you know this, you can use that uh, to create your maps. So in JavaScript, Probably one of the best uh, mapping libraries is Mapbox. And the thing that I like is that it's using WebGL. WebGL is really efficient. It's using 3D graphics. And that's how I did that animation that was uh, so smooth and uh, why I use it. So there's still a few things that I had to do. I had to transform that again and load it in Mapbox, which is the library that I use, and also create some layers which are where I locate my stations. So this is not an easy uh, job, but when I finished, I got to this point. So that was my first, my first stage. One thing that you can notice here is that it's quite difficult to see the information because there's a lot of data. So one thing that I did is I uh, introduced one technology that is called clusters. So clusters will just show you, I mean, I will show you big groups all aggregated. So you don't see all of these small dots. And then it goes faster as well. Uh, another feature that I built is that I can navigate and I can kind of uh, explode this data. So here, there's only two stations there, and these are the two stations. So this is a much more faster um, way to navigate. And some of the changes, I also got excited, so I started adding features. Uh, maybe I added too many features. OK, so here is what I felt. I had total control of the maps. I had total control of the open API. That's awesome. But I wasn't finished. I also wanted to add the search. So then I, did to, I need to do a couple more changes. And one was creating a GraphQL API. And the other one was adding this uh, information into Elasticsearch. So I could do a search. Let me just quickly show you that. So this is um, an environment where I can run queries. And this is the query that I'm going to use. And the best thing is that I can introduce the data of uh, longitude and latitude, and also give um, how many kilometers I want that data from. So uh, you can see here I ran this before. So that's using GraphQL, and it's giving me a total of 35 uh, stations. Let's see if that's working. Let's use two kilometers. So that's 152. It's, uh, it's working. As you can see, it's very fast. It just gives me all of these results almost in no time. And this is because I'm using Elasticsearch. OK, so this is another feature that I built. And this is uh, what I had to do. If you know GraphQL, you know that you need to write your GraphQL schema. And the only thing that I had to do is introduce this um, directive, which is a transform, calling searchable. And I had to introduce the location. And from this uh, point, Elasticsearch was going to take care of that for me. And it was also creating that query that I showed you. So this was not a lot of work. As you can see, there's no much code here. So what's the future? Well, the future looks awesome. And this probably makes no sense to you, but I'm going to, I'm going to break it down. So this is a cat in the universe playing DJ with a pizza. 
Okay? Can you as assimilate that concept? It makes no sense, but it's great. So this is, this is, I think, what you have to do when you are building these applications. You need to look for something that is not the common thing that you see every day. You need to push a little bit the limits and build something crazy. And I think you can do it. So if you want to know more, I'm going to give you a few recommendations. These are uh, my colleagues that help to build AWS Amplify and the tools that I use to build that demo. And that's all. Thank you for listening. <laughs>